guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today I want to show you how to make these really cool looking vertical hanging strawberry planters. So when I very first started thinking about this project, I was thinking, okay, what can I put these strawberries in that'll hang and kind of like look like wind chime tubes? And I saw this black PVC pipe at the hardware store and I thought this was perfect. It's four inch diameter so you can plant and they have enough room you know, for root growth. And I got the glue and everything and we started doing the project and I thought, wait a second, I'm using toxic PVC glue and PVC plastic to boot and planting edibles in it probably not the best mix. So we pitched the idea and I went back down to the hardware store and I just walked the aisles looking for something that might work. Went down the aisle that has all the ventilation stuff and found these three foot sections of galvanized ductwork. They're actually cheaper than PVC, they're safe to plant in, and they look a whole lot better. So ductwork usually comes in sections that are open like this, so you have to snap them together. So there's a groove on one side, so we need to put this side, like fit this into the groove by starting on one end and then we just work our way to the other end. So I've got it all snapped together, so now I need to put the cap on, and the cap end is gonna be at the bottom of this planter right here, so I had to make sure to put a drainage hole in, and you can see that this one already has a hole in it. I was working with this one on the, kind of my practice round, and I really didn't wanna have to go buy another cap, so I just used a metal drill bit and put a hole in the bottom so that the water can drain freely. So then you just ease it onto one side, the corrugated side here, like that. And then we're gonna use five self-tapping metal sheet metal screws right here. And we're gonna screw the cap to the cylinder. And you can see the holes are already in here because I used it for practice. So you don't have to pre-drill the holes like this. The self-tapping screws will go right through the metal. Screws are in and the cap is on nice and tight. So the next step is to measure my first row of planting holes. And we wanna do this fairly close to the seam. We want the holes to end up maybe like an inch or so away. That way we don't ever have to cut a hole right over the seam and we can end up with three rows of holes like on this one. You can see that there's plenty of space so that the seam, it stays together, but it allowed us to get three rows. This was my practice one. You can see I did not measure that properly. So this one only has two rows. I just didn't want to mess with the integrity of the cylinder, so I stayed away from the seam. So I'm gonna start by going seven and a half inches down, making a mark, and then making a mark every six inches after that. So 13 and a half, 19 and a half, 25 and a half, and 31 and a half. And we don't measure for the rest of the holes, we just kind of guesstimate where the next ones need to be. You just kind of need a good starting place. The next step is to cut our planting holes, and for this step you'll want two people, one person to hold the cylinder steady while the other person cuts. And we're just using a drill with a two and a half inch bimetal hole saw. And for this step you'll also want to make sure you're wearing long sleeves, gloves, and eye protection. So this is what it looks like when you're all done cutting your planting holes. There are 15 total, 16 including the top. After you're done cutting your holes, you will want to make sure to wear gloves after this point because these holes are a little bit sharp and jagged and you want to protect your hands. So the next thing I'm going to do is drill three holes on the top so we can get it ready to hang. I like to slide a 2x4 in here just for a little bit of extra stability when I'm drilling. The next thing I'm gonna use are these 1 8 inch quick links and they actually come in packs of three like this. So I'm gonna feed one through each one of the holes I just drilled. So the next thing I'm gonna do is attach a short length of chain and I bought this just in a package and I'm cutting it myself with bolt cutters. You can see right here, but you don't have to buy it this way. They actually usually sell it in bulk and the people at the store will cut it into the exact lengths that you want it. All three chains are on, so now I'm gonna add one more quick link to the end of each chain. Then each of these will go into one one and a half inch ring. So there you have it. The construction is completely done. All we have left to do is to plant it. Okay, I'm all set up and ready to plant. I've got my planting tray here, which is really nice to have because it catches all the excess dirt. And this project is probably one of the messiest ones I've done to date. Uh, it ends up very tidy and nice looking, but the process is kind of a disaster. To, so to use one of these is really nice. Um, I also use it to mix my soil. So this is leftover soil from last time I planted one. Um, what I did is I just poured some soil into it and then I mixed in 
uh, some biotone starter fertilizer into the soil, which is just a good thing to add when you're planting something new because it kind of just helps the plant get going. And it's also an organic, so it's a slow breakdown, a slow feed for the plant. So it'll have a lot of nutrients to draw from for quite a long time. So to plant this, I start from the bottom and I work my way up. So I'm just gonna use the holes here and I just take handfuls of soil and start <laughs> filling it up. And then I'll plant each hole with the strawberry and just keep working my way up until I get to the top, in which case I will put a strawberry right out of the top hole. I told you it's a super messy project, but I got all the strawberries in there. I had one strawberry to spare, which is amazing. I love it when that happens and I don't have to make an extra trip to the store. The last step of this project is really important and it's to keep the strawberries in and the soil in and to make it look really clean and tidy. And that is to take little pieces of moss and tuck them around each strawberry plant. So we'll start right here. We'll show you up close and you just kind of poke it in and around the plant and that way it holds everything inside. And you can use whatever kind of moss you want so long as they're kind of in chunks. This is a super moss preserved sheet moss. All right, it's all done and I think it turned out really, really good. I don't think I mentioned though what type of strawberries I used in the planter and I chose an ever bearing variety um, because I think they're better suited for a planter like this. There's two different kinds you can get essentially, June bearing and uh, ever bearing. June bearing strawberries bear all of their crop usually right around June and they're really good for people who like to harvest everything all at once. They're guaranteed a great big crop so they can freeze, make jam, that kind of thing. Ever bearing varieties don't bear quite as much all at once but they bear all through the season and that's kind of what I want from all of these planters. I want to put them somewhere where people can see them, where you can just pick them as they ripen throughout the whole season, have a little snack here or there. Um, so these are Quinault and Ozark Beauty. So I mix two different ever bearing varieties together in this container. And you can see that they're already starting to go for it. We've got blooms, we've got little strawberries forming. So watering on this is really pretty simple. You just water it from the top. You wanna to start by watering it in really gently um, with just a really slow trickle from a hose. These right here, I'm actually gonna run drip to. So I'm gonna hook into our drip system. I'll run it up a beam and then over and down. So straight down from wherever it's hanging right to the top. Um, the dripper, like the zone usually runs for, you know, a good 30 minutes. So it'll be plenty of time for the water to start at the top and make it all the way to the bottom. And we do have a drain hole down there, so it's totally fine. Excess water will drain out. Um, and they will be in a spot that gets a good amount of morning sun. So I think it gets a good eight hour block, but it is protected from the really, really intense late afternoon, early evening sun, which I think is important when you've got something planted in a small container that's metal because this will get quite hot. So I think morning sun is more appropriate. So the last thing I have to do is just to hang it. And I'm using an S hook right here. These are um, something you can find at your local garden center. They're great for hanging flower baskets and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna run it through the ring here. I'm gonna lift the whole planter down. And then I'm just gonna hang it from a beam on the pergola here. <laughs> Kinda had to make a little jump there. That's perfect. I love how they look. I actually really like that the whole project ended up needing to take a shift right from the very beginning away from black PVC and using the galvanized metal just looks a lot classier, I think, a little bit more upscale. Uh, and they do kind of resemble wind chimes a little bit more than black PVC. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this project and we will see you in the next video. Bye.